everybody welcome back to another weekly video if you haven't seen our previous week's videos make sure you go to our channel and check those out while you're there make sure you hit the subscribe button and that bell so you're notified of all our weekly videos and updates and let's get started here in our garden we've got lots of growth here in our front row of tomatoes as i mentioned last week i have attempted to try and thin some out it has been a very much work in progress um there's been a lot of suckers growing in there so I've been cutting all those out as I can and as I go along but I can still see lots so it, like I said it's been a work in progress we've got some nice larger tomatoes developing here at the front though so that's really exciting along the back fence I've tidied those ones up quite a bit so that they are now trying to climb up the fence a bit and they are off of the pepper plants in there so that is really important and really good that they are tidied up a bit I also attempted to tidy up some of the ones in the middle, but that's a different story. That's a, its own little jungle. And there's just so many flowers in there, that, and they're so delicate, that I just don't necessarily want to climb in there to try and clean up this center bit. But we are starting to see some of our marigolds bloom in there, so that's nice. So we've got some extra colors happening in our garden. I do quite enjoy color in my garden. Our our tomatoes though, as you see, are quite full. They're doing quite well, even though they are that full. There's no signs of any disease or anything like that in there, which I have been monitoring quite closely because of how tightly packed they are. We're all really happy with the growth of them and can't wait to actually start getting those tomatoes. As we get to the herb patch here, I harvested some of the basil the sage and some dill this week the dill i froze and the sage and basil i dried out and have started to store in jars for the winter time so that we'll have our own dehydrated or dried out herbs from our garden i will be probably harvesting more of it again this week because as you can see it doesn't even look like i really touched it back in there our pepper plants are doing quite good they're growing in lots. Some of them are quite bushy. I'm trying to climb in there. Past the asparagus. There we go. So they're getting quite bushy. Not too much in the way of peppers in these ones here. But they, they are started. They're just very small so far. Very small. There is some growth, they're very bushy, so it'll be very exciting to see this start to fill out over the next couple weeks. This section of the garden gets a little bit more shade than that side. That side's already in the sun, whereas this section is already in the shade. It's still in the shade from our morning tree coverage. As we move over to the lettuce and garlic, the garlic is so close to being ready to be pulled holding off a little bit but we don't want to hold off too long because that's also bad. Some of my lettuce is going to seed here and that's okay because I really like this one so I'm going to try and harvest these seeds and I've allowed this one celery plant to go to seed so hopefully it will be long enough in the season that we can harvest those seeds because celery seeds are actually tougher to find around here. Onion patch is looking great. They're looking really big. We did harvest one of those last week. It was a good size, um, pretty, pretty short though. So we're gonna allow them to grow a bit taller, which I'm sure they will as the summer goes on, as we just are starting August tomorrow. The peas are doing really well. The fence looks really wobbly right now. I was in there this morning picking peas, harvested about a bowl's worth of peas from there. So that's really good. They've been a constant producer since they started a few weeks ago. So that's the one nice thing about peas. As long as you're picking them, they will put out new flowers thinking that they haven't set their seeds. And you can continue to get peas pretty much all season long once they've started. So that's the really nice thing about those. The kurabi is being eaten by the caterpillars from the white butterflies but the kurabi itself won't be as damaged, won't get damaged by them because they don't like the actual root vegetable or vegetable down there, so that's good. So I'm allowing it to eat the leaves, but not worried about the bottom. Our leeks are doing really good. They're getting nice and fat. Got some good girth to them, so that's really exciting. 
moving on to the beets. We've been harvesting these every couple of days. We take a couple out of here now and we've been adding them to our roasted, roasted peppers and things like that, or roasted carrots and putting them on the barbecue. Really yummy. The golden ones have a stronger taste than the candy cane striped ones, which we were kind of surprised of. Been harvesting carrots now as well. We've got a couple that are starting to show signs of a flower. So I will probably allow one of those to go to seed and see if we can get some seeds from that as well, because always important to get some seeds as we go. We've got our little carrot patch here from our second succession. It's doing really well. So really happy with that. Haven't started to even think about pulling from there as we have quite a few carrots there. This one will take us into the fall though. And maybe even a bit later because you can leave carrots in the garden as it frosts. They actually like that. It helps them get a bit sweeter the cooler temp temperatures. Strawberry patch has really filled out over the last week. So I'm really happy with that. We've got quite a few runners starting in there. Still lots of blooms, some strawberries. They're absolutely delicious, but I'm really happy to see all the runners starting because we will allow them to go to this corner and that's going to be really good for them and for us because we'll have more strawberries. First green, first bean trellis here are green beans. We do have some tiny little beans starting to develop. Nothing like our scarlet runner beans further down though, as you'll see as we get moving along. Our zucchini plants are doing great. This zucchini plant right here has been the largest producer so far. It's given us probably five or six zucchinis already, and there's already four or five there that are almost ready to be harvested. Haven't gotten anything from the little guy yet, and we've only done one from the one that's further in there. That one there, I believe, is a black beauty zucchini on the back row. So it is a different variety than these front two. This one here, I've also pruned some leaves back. I'm trying to do a bit of an experiment to see if it does a little bit better. It also looks like it's got some sort of, I almost want to say a powdery mildew or something on the leaves. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It's not affecting the plant itself, so I've just been kind of allowing it to be. It could be from watering as well, being watered when it was too hot out. So, not quite sure. Turning around, we're going to look at our raised planters and our brassicas. Been battling the little green caterpillars like crazy. It's been a battle, that's for sure. Maybe a slowly losing battle, but we are trying. We've harvested a couple cauliflowers now, and this morning I trimmed back a bunch of the broccoli heads. So as we're moving along, you'll see in here some of these tops of the broccoli has been cut off. I'm going to allow some of these little baby shoots to shoot up, and then we'll get some little tiny heads from those. It's important if you're going to do this with your broccoli to cut it on an angle so that any water drips off. It doesn't have to be a crazy angle, but just enough of an angle that the water is going to slide off of the plant because you don't want it pooling there because that can cause disease and disease will ultimately not be good for your plant in the long run. Overall, we've been happy with the brassicas and the growth of them. The next year we're definitely going to do something to battle the white butterflies and caterpillars a little bit more because like I said it has been a quite the battle and there's been quite the few caterpillars sacrificed for us to get these beautiful brassicas. We're going to quickly step over to our horseshoe bed or an experiment bed and just check out some of our pepper plants and talk about a few things in here. So the peppers overall are doing really well. Our mini bell peppers on that side are doing excellent. Lots of little peppers on there. Hopefully they'll start to turn color over the next week or so. And then we'll have like the rainbow coloration that it should have. Our cantaloupe here in the corner is doing pretty good. There has been a couple blooms. I'm not sure if they were uh, pollinated or not. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. There's a few blooms in there though to see if we actually get cantaloupe or not. And then what's exciting here on our little tiny guy here, I've seen a few flowers and I did see, I'm not gonna be able to find them now, of course, a little tiny cucamelon starting to develop. They're so small, so oh, there we go. 
so small. It's very hard to show you, yeah, but there's a little tiny cucumelon developing. It'll be about the size of a grape when it's ready, so we'll wait for those and hopefully they get big enough that we get to try that. I have confidence though, because we do have a good, at least a solid month of really warm weather left. And then September starts to get more questionable here. But we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it'll be nice and warm. Back over to our main garden. We'll quickly talk about the cucumbers in the back row there. They're starting to really come along. That one plant there has got, say half a dozen cucumbers already starting to develop. They're about an inch long. So we'll let those get a couple inches long and then we'll start to pickle some of those. We'll do some baby ones and then we'll do some bigger ones as well. And we'll save those for the winter and into the spring next year until we can have our garden replanted. Our spaghetti squash is doing fantastic. There's at least half a dozen spaghetti squashes on there. So I'm really happy about that. They should last pretty well over the winter. So that's really exciting as well. Back to the Scarlet Runner bean. We always talk about this, but there's lots of growth here. So we're going to show it off. Some of the beans have started to really show off their size and are, as you can see, quite large. They will begin to turn more of a red color and then they will actually be ready for harvest. I haven't seen any hummingbirds at it, but I have seen hummingbirds on the property. So hopefully they have found it because that's why it's there. Oh, we have a bumblebee just loving it as well. So that's always nice. Lots of bees in the garden today. That is a great sign of a healthy garden. So I'm really happy about that, especially with the large fields around us. Sometimes you worry that the bees won't find your small little garden here in the middle. Corn patch is doing really good. We've been trying to water this a lot more. So we've got a lot of tassels showing. There's even some silk starting to show down in here. Very hard to see because they're kind of hiding down in there, but that's really exciting. And hopefully we will develop some actual corn ears in there. But overall, I think it's doing well. Nothing quite like our neighbor's corn, which is taller than me already, but I believe he started that early and indoors. So a lesson to be learned because it's doing quite well. His has also been watered three times a day so that's also something that we are learning that corn really likes a lot of water. So food note noted, dearly noted for next year. Water corn more. Potatoes are looking okay. There are some that are looking like they're almost ready to be harvested especially along the fence in there. That may be because they get more shade. Not 100% sure about that, but they're getting to a point where I'll probably climb in there over the next week or two and harvest select potatoes to start and leave some of these healthier looking plants alone to last a longer time. Overall, we're really pleased with the growth in our garden and we're so happy that you guys came out and watched our videos. So if you haven't liked it already, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week. Bye now.